Hey, this is the Boxing Junkie coming to you from Baltimore. Uh, I know you enjoyed your weekend as much as I did. Uh, I'm not religious, but the boxing gods definitely blessed us. Now, let's get into the most significant win first. Uh, and the most impressive win to me. Um, Jamal Charlo versus uh, J-Rock Williams. Uh, excellent fight. Um, I picked J Rock to win, and before I start, uh, I called uh, Jamal Charlo a weight bully. And peace to the Fox Strikes. He was in my comment section and said that uh, J Rock was a weight bully too. Um, I agreed to that, but I think it was clear in the fight that uh, J-Rock is a 154-pound fighter and Jamal Charlo is a true weight b bully who uh, came in the size of a super middleweight. But, you know, he did what he had to do. Uh, both the fighters started off trying to get off on their jabs. Uh, Charlo just had a better jab, more power. Um, you know, he had a jab that floored Williams in the second round. And, uh, you know, it was the first time Williams has been knocked down. Uh, he was trying to get himself back together, but he was having some trouble, if I remember correctly. But then he landed a, uh, I believe it was a right hand that got him back into the fight and... Uh, he survived to the end of the second round, which I'm surprised he got out of. If it wasn't for that right hand, he wouldn't have got out of it. But this fight here was really impressive. Uh, J-Rock um, was putting on some real nice moves in the ring, uh, showing why I picked him. Um, he's just the more uh, clean-cut fighter, but... Uh, he he was just overpowered, and uh, Charlo seemed to be able to pull the trigger when there were little tiny openings that were taking uh, J-Rock a little more time to find. Um, it seems like Charlo can just pull the trigger right when he sees it without even thinking, and uh, that made the difference in the fight. But um, major props for two young fighters getting in. You know, not waiting, not uh, thinking the fight needs to marinate and all the bullshit we put up with nowadays as fans. So, uh, yeah, props to Al Heyman and uh, Richard Schaefer and all the crooks it took to put this together. And the second knockdown in the uh, fifth round, I mean, the, the second knockdown of the fight, um, I'm really surprised J-Rock got up after that. Uh, that was one hell of a uppercut he ate, and uh, just a great performance by uh, Jamal Charlo. Uh, he's obvious that he's more dominant than his brother. Um, so, yeah, what's next? Uh, I don't want to see him move up and wait. I do want to see him finish his... Uh, work at 154 which means uh boo boo's next and as far as the sportsmanship or lack of sportsmanship after the fight uh who gives a fuck this ain't ice skating this is boxing and uh you know they were just in there trying to kill each other they don't have to like each other if they don't want to it's fine with me so on to the jesus quail jar Versus uh, Abner Mares fight. Uh, Jesus hired Freddie Roach, which uh, did him absolutely no good at all. So, uh, made the fight a little more interesting, you know, to be Freddie Roach and uh, Robert Garcia have. And Robert Garcia was training Abner Mares. And I really enjoyed this fight. Uh, 
Abner's left hook was really doing some uh, good work, and uh, both these fighters were game, and have nothing to be ashamed of, but uh, Abner Maris just out hustled him, and uh, you know, really started to put a beating on him down the stretch. I like how Maris was um, walking backwards, making uh, Quasar come towards him, and then setting little traps like uh, check hooks. Um, he kept landing that left hook over and over again. He was sneaking some rights in there, but uh, he he was just outsmarting Quasar uh, the whole fight and. You know, it, uh, I was glad to see Maris win. Even though I had, uh, Quasar picked, uh, I'm a Maris fan, and I really wanted to see him win. Now, one thing I didn't see was, uh, his brother Speedy, who I thought was going to be on the undercard. Uh, as Speedy did fight, and there's a link to it, could you let me know about it? You know, I got a lot of respect for, uh, these smaller fighters and uh, of course I believe they're in the featherweight division which is uh, stacked now I wouldn't expect these channels on here like uh, John Doe boxing or whatever the fuck his name is to know who these guys are because you know they don't watch the smaller fighters but they're um, they're the real true boxing fans right Psh, yeah right kiss my fucking ass if you don't enjoy the smaller weight weight classes you don't enjoy uh real skill because they they have to be more talented because they don't have the uh one punch stopping power that a heavyweight has so therefore they gotta master the fundamentals they gotta uh come up with their own shit right on the spot um, they just can't throw three punches and wait to land a big right hand or anything like that. So, yeah, major props to the smaller fighters. You know, um, growing up, I was into the heavyweights big time because, you know, I came up when I was a little kid, you know, my family would watch Mike Tyson. And then uh, I grew up watching... At a young age, uh, Bo fight Holyfield and the great trilogy they had. And now uh, I'm lacking knowledge in the heavyweight division because uh, it's just now starting to heat back up. So uh, I think I'll always have a thing for the smaller fighters though because... You know, that's where the action is. And welterweight is always my favorite weight class. But uh, the heavyweights are coming back, so maybe I can get back into it. Uh, just give me some time right now. Um, like I said, I'm not, I'm not that sharp on the heavyweights. So after Maris knocked Quajar down in the uh, 11th, I believe it was, uh, when he got up, he had nothing left on his punches, nothing at all, so uh, he didn't have a chance of going for the knockout. But there's one thing, one more thing I want to point out about this fight. Uh, on this channel, I will always point out the fucked up corruption that's going on in boxing, especially with the judges. So uh, just keep this in mind. The three judges were Max DeLuca, Dave Moretti, who have no uh, shortage of fights that they've fucked up real bad between the two of them. And then Kermit Bayless. Uh, if you're not familiar with Kermit Bayless, you're definitely familiar with his twin brother, Kenny Bayless, uh, who seems to be competent, but then again, uh, not competent, depending on who he's protecting. So Kermit Bayless seems to be the same way. Uh, so I'm just going to let you hear the uh, the scores, and I'm going to post my scorecard right above. A split decision. 
Judging ringside, Max DeLuca scores about 117 to 110 in favor of Abner Maris. Judge of ringside, Kermit Bela sees the bout 115 to 112 in favor of Jesus Cuellar. And judge of ringside, Dave Moretti sees the bout 116 to 111 in favor of the winner and the new WBA. See, so uh, Kermit Bayless. Uh, I guess the corrupted rotten apple don't fall far from the tree in his fucking family. Now, on to the heavyweights. Uh, real quick, just something about uh, Eric Molina. Um, I always looked at him as a bum. Then he fought Wilder. Uh, and I don't know if you... Well, I'm sure you remember if you're watching this channel. Uh, Molina wobbling Wilder. In the was it the third round? I believe it was the third round, and giving Wilder a lot more trouble than anyone thought he would have gave Wilder. And uh, so, be careful what bum you pick uh, if you're Wilder. Now, speaking of Wilder, his let's see, his technical. Um, ability is just horrible. Uh, I catch him in this stance once in a while where he's like leaned forward with his chin sticking right out in the fucking air. And believe me, if you're a Wilder fan, one day someone's going to touch that chin and it's going to knock his big ass right the fuck out. Now, let's get on to the uh, Anthony Joshua Molina fight. That was just a funny memory I wanted to share with you. Joshua did exactly what I expected him to do, which was uh, put this ass beating on Molina and, you know, not get um, buzzed like Wilder did. Um, I don't expect him to make them amateur mistakes like uh, Wilder does. He's much more technically sound, uh, much more textbook. Uh, you know, like I said earlier in the video, uh, I kind of stopped watching heavyweights for a while, but, uh, it's people like Joshua, um, Fury, unfortunately Fury's out of the game for now, and, uh, Deontay Wilder that, um, uh, along with a bunch of other fighters that are, uh, getting me back into it and uh, um, I always keep an eye on Mr. Boxing Today 2's channel cause uh, he always keeps up with the heavyweights and uh, yeah just a great performance by Anthony Joshua and Molina was um, laying on the ropes and uh they kind of let the fight go on a little too long, I think. Um, luckily, Joshua didn't kill his ass. But, uh, great fight. Now, let's talk about what happened at the end of the fight. This is how a fight should end. A beautiful knockout. Then the announcement of a super fight that the whole world's been waiting for. The whole boxing world's been waiting on. So we will be seeing Anthony Joshua and Vladimir Klitschko fight in April. I believe it's uh, April 24th, which will be a nice uh, nice birthday present for me. My birthday is around then. And uh, right now, um, I think I'd have to go with Joshua based on youth and... Uh, Klitschko seems to always have an injury or be faking an injury. I'm not really sure. But, uh, you know, it's it's a hard fight to tell because Klitschko is just so crafty and uh, a, a very dirty fighter at the same time. Um, but 
You know, like Andre Ward fans will say, you have to adjust. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you have to adjust, adjust. And if there's a headbutt, he's just trying to fight on the inside, right? Wrong. Shut your fucking channels down, clowns. Uh, Bell train against Menard. Uh, I watched the fight with my cousin, and I was a little distracted. Uh, he doesn't watch boxing much at all, so uh, he was asking me questions and shit, which there's nothing wrong with, but, uh, you know, and I wasn't too interested in this fight anyways, but from what I saw, uh, Beltran looked great. Um, it's probably the best I've ever seen him look. Uh, the way he was just going to the body and uh, his movement. Uh, bouncing on his toes and shit. He looked like he was having a good time. Uh, he was doing an excellent job just uh, picking off the punches that were being thrown at him. Um, it's hard to describe. He's got a real deceptive way of doing it. But, uh, yeah, he did great. Um, he really did. Now, who oh, I'm just watching the, uh, he, he just floored him. Yeah, I don't think he's going to get up. Yeah, they just stopped the fight. Uh, excellent part on Beltran. And, uh, now we're going to get into the most dominant, uh, performance of the night. Uh, is definitely Terrence Crawford. Now, when we talk about Terrence Crawford, uh, I got the feeling we're talking about an all-time, a future all-time great. Um, just the way he switches from orthodox to southpaw seamlessly. Um, seems to fight as good either way. Uh, and the way he makes his opponents. You know, when he beats him, he makes it look easy. Uh, are all things that, you know, great fighters have a habit of doing. Um, Floyd, even though I didn't always... Um, well, well, I always liked Floyd's style. Um, I like many different styles of boxing. Uh, sometimes he was a little dull. And I would like to see him go for... Um, a little more aggression, but I appreciate his defensive skills and everything he brought to the ring. Uh, besides the bullshit with um, the A-side and uh, being the crybaby that he was. But uh, Terrence Crawford don't have none of that in him, really. He seems like a, a dog. Um, he's got a chip on his shoulder, which I like. And, um, now, there were some political things that happened during this fight. I'm not sure if you, uh, are aware of them, but I don't want to take away from Crawford's victory, so I'm just gonna, uh, yeah, fuck it, I'll say it. Um, alright, Molina had no idea that he was going to be fighting Crawford. Crawford had a 100% idea that he was going to be fighting Molina. So, you know, this is part of the reason why Molina didn't make weight at all. Now, I thought at the beginning of this fight that Molina was coming in just for a payday and was going to lay down, but uh, because his fight against Adrian Broner was real questionable to me. Um, he didn't seem like he was trying to do anything more than get a check. So, I was leery about him going into this fight. Uh, he didn't do good at all, but he showed me that, um, he just wasn't there to lie down. So, uh, props to him for that. Now, talk about an ass-beating and dominating. Uh, Terrence Crawford just fucking did it all. Um, 
Yeah, he did it all Saturday. Uh, an amazing, amazing fighter. I believe he fought Southpaw the whole fight. I wish Max Kellerman would shut the fuck up with this, uh, comparing him to, you know, so-and-so when he's just a totally different fighter. Uh, you know, he don't remind me of, um, Floyd at all besides being, uh, um, a superstar. I compare them, when I see... Uh, Crawford, I see him as the next big thing in boxing. Um, now, I don't think I've ever talked about him in depth on my channel, but uh, I'm a big Crawford fan. Uh, he, ever since he beat uh, Burns, I believe it was, um, I knew about him before then, but uh, that's when he... Um, really popped up on my radar and I really started paying attention to him like you know this motherfucker's going somewhere and I want to see it and uh you know here he is with uh Molina and just totally dominated Molina but props to Molina you know he was getting um schooled like uh Walters was by Lomachenko but Here's the difference, you know. John Molina, it looked like he was limping. Um, he was constantly going after uh, Crawford and would not give up. And that's why he will stay relevant. And that's why Nicholas Walters will fucking fade into obscurity. You just don't quit. And, uh, you know, again, props to Molina for... Um, coming in overweight, uh, taking the fight on early notice, um, knowing that Crawford had already planned to be fighting, so he was going to be in excellent shape, and not quitting the whole time, you know. Crawford started off the first round fighting uh, Orthodox. Uh, about halfway through, he switched to Southpaw. And, and he constantly had Molina following him and was catching him with check hooks, uh, setting traps for him constantly. Uh, Molina, it was very hard to even count the punches that Molina was landing. But it was apparent that uh, Molina wasn't going to win rounds. Um, I mean... What do you think? He's dumb enough to think that he's going to come in and all of a sudden outbox Terrence Crawford. Uh, so you could see what he was trying to do. Him and his team knew um, he was going to take hella punishment uh, and just stay on Crawford the whole time. You know, constantly um, keep following him. Uh, he didn't do no cutting off of the ring. It was just more following him around and hoping that one of his haymakers would land. And uh, really, I think that is the only chance that Molina would have had of winning this fight. Um, now, I think he should have tried to throw more punches, but uh, he, he was getting tagged up. And just like... Uh, Last week, Lomachenko's foot positioning as a southpaw was constantly on the outside the whole time. Uh, I'm not sure who done better establishing their foot position, uh, Crawford or Lomachenko. Um, but, you know, Crawford put on a, a much better performance with a much shittier fighter and... Lomachenko put on a great performance with a um, with a more decent opponent. Uh, yeah, just a real dominant performance by Crawford. Um, I'd like to see the copy box numbers for this fight, even though we all know copy box is flawed. Uh, 
Diddy land in the 50% range. Um, someone let me know, please. This had to be one of the most dominant performances uh, recorded on CompuBox. So I would definitely like to see the numbers again. Uh, and, you know, Crawford's just one of my favorite fighters to watch. Uh, I do got him beating Manny Pacquiao if they do fight. I doubt Manny wants anything to do with Crawford. I think Manny's just hanging around for a few paydays. Uh, he's put his work in the sport and now feels like he's got the right to sit back and uh, pick these bullshit fights. Now, um, if he wants to do that, that's fine with me. Uh, he won't get no support from me for the shit. Uh, unless if he wants to throw his hat in and... Um, fight Terrence Crawford. Shit, real quick. Uh, is anyone aware of Molina coming into the fight with a leg injury? Or injuring his uh, leg after the fight? I mean, during the fight? Because uh, he sure did appear to be dragging that leg pretty bad. Now, uh, the fight was in Omaha. I'd like to see... Uh, Crawford get out of there a little bit. I don't want him to turn into an Andre Ward thing. But uh, it won't. You know, uh, Crawford's a, a real fighter. He ain't one of these bitch maids sit in the courtroom, sue everybody, fucking uh, take a belt and run, uh, or get scared of a rematch and start talking about retiring. Uh, he's an excellent fighter. Excellent fighter. Got a lot of dog in him. I got the feeling that uh, Crawford heard all the talk about Lomachenko last week or the week before that, whenever it was. And him being uh, talked about as pound for pound. Uh, and I think it really inspired him to put on one hell of an ass whooping tonight against John Molina and fight him in the southpaw stance the whole time. Uh, yeah, I really feel like he wanted to, um, you know, say, hey, what about me? And where do I fit on this pound-for-pound pound list? And that's why I hate getting in the pound-for-pound pound conversation, but it looks like I'll have to, um, it looks like I'm going to start making up a list real soon. So the fight was just stopped, a uh, eighth-round stoppage. And just let me say that the fight should have been stopped way before this. Uh, you know, John Molina's been in some battles, and there's no need for him to take punishment like that when he's not willing to quit like a motherfucker like Walter's bitch ass is. Uh, someone's got to stop the fight for him, and no one did that. So, uh, you know, hopefully he's all right. And great performance by uh, Terrence Crawford. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I'm getting a little bit of a cold, uh, anyways, this is JR, the Boxing Junkie, um, thanks for watching, peace.